on this episode of The World's Strictest Parents. This is a trust issue. Meet the Illigs from Tennessee. Right there, scrub that area. A principled family who demand complete respect. Not halfway, but 100%. And total effort. You know the rules on this? For the next week, they'll take in two teens who are a law unto themselves. They're not in the freaking house! But when they refuse to fall into line... I'm not gonna change for you. Will the Illigs cut them down to size? Welcome to my world. This really doesn't make any sense. Hey, what's up? I'm Sebastian. I'm from Chats, California. I'm 17. I love the party. I'm talking to <laughs> pick up. <laughs> You're tripping. It seems like a joke, but it's not. Can you pick up? I'm not picking up poop. Chores are useless. I don't really do them at all. Get away from me. No, I'm not gonna you're not fight smoking. you for a No, you're not smoking. I feel I don't get anywhere with arguing with him. He just turns off and forget it. So let me put it out right now. Right now? That's right now. I don't need parents nagging at me all the time. You don't do something oh. like that. It brings everything else. Yeah. It's been getting out of hand. He's he's been disrespectful. Sebastian. And then let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. What got him to you, <laughs> Sebi? He's too close to that fine line where you can make a big mistake and not be able to come back. Sebi. I'm Becky, I'm 16, I'm from Cass State, California. What? I'm so sick of your acting. Fine! Then go away! Living with Rebecca, things get very loud. Give me your lighter. You're not smoking. You were not smoking in this house. I'm going outside. I'm not in the freaking house. I usually smoke about a pack a day. Okay, so this is my ashtray. It has a little match and ashes in it. I don't like her smoking at all. I just want to pretend it doesn't exist, I guess. Kind of hard to text and do the dishes. I'm not doing the dishes. It is very hard to watch Becky go down this path. You are so out of control. You are unbelievable. She is going to give up and do absolutely nothing with her life. Becky, get in the house. My mom is super bitchy. She's usually really annoying. And when I turn 18, I plan on moving out. Get in the house. I hope this week makes him realize that he's got a family that cares for him and makes him think about what he's doing of his life. If they don't respect me right when I get there, I'm just gonna be a to them. I hope she learns how important family is. If things don't change for Becky, I think she's got a very, very hard life ahead of her. This family definitely has no idea what they're in for. My name is Ken Illy. My wife is Mary Jo, and we reside in White Bluff, Tennessee with our children, Jake and Rebecca. Jake, you and I need to go out and get the fortress cleaned up. If you live here, you will participate, or you'll live somewhere else. Scrub that area. There you go. We have to be tough with our children, and we have to make decisions that they may not understand. It all makes sense when they see the big picture. Come on, Becca, let's go over your plan for today, and let's see where you're at, OK? In my family, everyone has to follow a structured, organized life. You got a whole wow, week. It's a perfect guy. week. Yes. If you don't, you get punishments. Don't give me that garbage. The stumps of correction are basically stumps we have in our yard that need to be sawed. I need you to start now. They chose that consequence by not following whatever rule it was. Is a, a continuous reminder of, do I really want to go back and try this again? You know the rules on this? If you don't check it off when it's done, I'm not going to give you credit. I think it's a good thing that they're strict. It helps all of us stay on task. We want to make sure that you're always doing your very best, right? Right. Not halfway, but 100% all the time. Yeah. The fastest way to get on my bad side is not being truthful. It hurts far less to tell the truth than it does to lose our trust. Yeah, proud mm -hmm. of you. When I first saw Sebastian, he was pretty laid back. Like, he's badass. We're in this together. All right. <laughs> We're going to destroy him. How often do you party? Every weekend. <laughs> 
I just got suspended for getting in a fight. Did you beat her ass? She thinks she won because like half my hair was pulled out, but she had a broken nose, so you decide who won. Nice. Nice. Driving to the house, the first thing I thought is welcome to hell. It's these trees and grass. There's absolutely nothing. All right, guys. Here we are, guys. Go say hi. Yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. My first impression of the Illick family was that they looked really dorky and not fun. And the dad looks like a douchebag. <laughs> my name's Ken. I'm Sebastian. Say that again? Sebastian. You could tell Sebastian is from City of Life for sure, just based on what he was wearing. Hey. And your name is? I'm Becky. 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 Awesome. Oh, That'll be yeah. easy. Yeah. Becky, though, was very standoffish. She was very closed in. Well, yeah. great. We're glad you're here. Come on yeah. in. Did you expect the country? No. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, I'm hanging out with a bunch of tourists for the week. But they look easy, like, to manipulate. Oh, no, we're going to sit here. Okay. I'm going to go over a couple of rules. First rule. No tobacco products of any sort. No dip, no smoking, nothing. Big one right here. No lying. You have to be able to trust us, and we have to be able to trust you. Are we clear on that? When they told me no lying, like, well, that sucks for you, because I'm going to be lying the whole time. We expect you to submit to our authority while you're here. The fact that Ken said I have to submit to authority, and I. I really wasn't okay with that. I'm still not okay with that. With me? Sebastian, have I lost you? <laughs> no, I'm just thinking. You're soaking it in. Yeah. Good choices equal rewards. Bad choices equal the consequences of that as well. Let's head to the dining room table, and we'll finish up there. We're almost done. We were not going to allow them free access into our house until we knew exactly what they had on them and what was in their luggage. Remember our rules, right? Do you have anything that you want to surrender before we go through your bags? No. Nothing. Excellent. Great. First integrity check. Miss Becky, would you please bring your bags over here? We assumed that both teams would attempt to try to hide things from us. We're going to go through it together. I really had no problem lying to them. I knew I hid my cigarettes really well. I knew he wasn't going to find them. You came up clean. And now, I need you to check her person. You can take off your jacket. Well, so I need... in my jacket, I have a cigarette. OK. Is this the only cigarette that you have? Yes. OK. My impression now of Becky is that she is a little bit sneaky. Socks, shoes, anything in your shoes? Nope, nothing at all. She is good to go. Excellent. Mm hmm When I started seeing him go through my bag, I just got really nervous. Oh, there's something. Hmm. No, two of them. <laughs> a pack a day, that would get him close to the week, won't it? Yeah. Who's responsible for it? Me. Who's accountable for the, for the I consequence? Am. I am. As long as you know. Rule number one, no tobacco. You guys force us to distrust you now, right? Because if you weren't honest here, can we know that you'll be honest in something else? You're going to have to re-earn that trust back with us, OK? All right, guys, come on over here. I'm going to take paint, and I'm going to put a mark around the stump. And then I need you to cut right below that paint. Who makes someone cut a tree stump for a consequence? You can start. I want you guys to work on this until I get back. It's going to take, like, freaking two hours. I felt like it was I was getting nowhere. I was doing so much work. This is stupid. This really doesn't make any sense. I don't understand why I'm doing this. It's not teaching me anything. The stumps of correction are designed to take time. He said that one was easier to use. Yeah. We want to give the team time to reflect on their choices. Was it worth it, Sebastian? No. Why not? Because I wouldn't have got to smoke them anyways. Five seconds of you made a choice gave you a bad result, right? Mm -hmm. I'm dreading, like, the whole week because I know I'm bound to break the rules that they made. How about you, Becky? It was an integrity check, right? Right. Welcome to my world. 
coming up. I'm not gonna change my pants for you. Sebastian clashes with Ken. No, they're still not acceptable. But who will win the battle of the pants? Good morning, guys. We're gonna touch just lightly on what happened last night and make sure that we're we're all clear and then we're gonna move forward into today, okay? So we're gonna go over these. These are your slices from last night that you finished. One of the things that you guys need to learn is for every action that you do, something's gonna happen, either good or bad. When we talk about choices yesterday and that kind of stuff, this is what we mean. He never stops talking. If all goes well, we'll have a good morning. The whole purpose of setting those slices out on the table, but just a gentle reminder that uh, the rules we have are solid, and if you break them, uh, plan on going back out there and cutting another slice. On your pants, Mr. Sebastian. Um, My pants don't go up to a certain place. They're right. girl pants. Um, right. The crotch so, area isn't that big. I understand. So if, if that's the case, you may need to change to a different pair of pants. I like my pants tight. I like them halfway down my ass. That's just my style. I'm giving you a heads up that we're going to keep our bottoms covered. That's modesty on your part, OK? All right, fair warning. So today, we're going to work together. We're going to head down to the garage. And uh, we've got to do some work on a car down there. We love to do restorations. Anytime that you can incorporate something fun, it's always beneficial because you can teach children lessons that they're going to absorb more readily. You know how to use a impact wrench? Yes or no? Yes. Huh? Yeah. OK. From this point on, I need you to no more mm -hmm and nodding heads. I want you to talk to me so I know for sure, OK? Both Sebastian and Becky were working, but I think both of them were not happy. Mr. Sebastian, pants up, please. Thank you. Sebastian's pants became an issue right off the bat. I need those pants off. They're not going to work. What do they not cover? They don't cover your rear end. OK? I can't allow you to wear them because it's not acceptable attire, all right? I didn't want to get into it with him and argue about it. So I was like, all right, so I'll just go in and I'll change my pants. Turn around. No. It's not happening. What do you mean, no? Yeah, they're still not acceptable, so I need you to change them I'm or not you're going to change get a, them. You're going to get a consequence. I'll get a consequence. I'm not changing them. OK, then let's go get a consequence then. I think he's offended because it's not normal out here to have your pants like that. I'm not going to change for him. I don't understand why I'm doing this for my pants. Well, the biggest reason that you're doing it is because your failure to submit to authority. Authority. Who's the authority in the house? I. All right. Mr. I want to be the authority. You're the authority of this tree. Right, I'll start when I want to. I need you to start now. I'm not going to start right now. I don't feel like starting right All now. All right, then just stay here until you're ready to get started, OK? Uh, Great. Not getting my way with Ken is extremely frustrating, because I'm not used to that at all. How is our home different than your home? Anyway, most of the time I'm not home. What well, makes home not enjoyable? There's nothing to do. How much time do you spend with your mom? Not a lot. No, does she have to work a lot? Yeah. I thought it was pretty stupid that they were trying to like get to know me. Like, like I don't want to know anything about them, so why should they know anything about me? What makes you want to be away from there? We're going to give her a few minutes. Mm -hmm. Let her clear her head. God, that's stupid. What? I think they need to like know every little detail about us. And, like, I don't need to know from their business. Well, there he is. And how can you miss him? If there is a conflict of any sort, the way she handles it is flee the scene. What's going on, guys? He's sitting. Becky, would you go with Mary Jo for me, please, so I can talk with Sebastian? Becky needed some time to calm down. The only reason why I'm mad is that I tried to change my pants to make you happy. Right. You did it. Right. And then these are much better than the other pants. 
I, okay. It was a big step, because I never wear like pe these pants, like pants these, this loose. Sebastian needed to understand that there could only be one authority in the house, and he had to grasp that before we could move forward. What it turned into was a power struggle, and we can't have that. So how are we going to get on the same page? You've got to choose to change. I'm not going to change for you. Then we'll just continue to do consequence until you decide to get it right. I decided just to cut the wood and get it over with. I need you to get back over to the stumps and stay there, please. That's what I'm going to do. Thank you very much. There's one person in charge, and I am that person. Might learn to cut with your left hand, too, if you get too tired. I wanted to make him aware that he had to be accountable for his actions. Becky, on the other hand, still has a lot of layers. She's a long way away yet. Coming up. I lost everything in the house. A lesson in giving, but the teens have other plans. How can I help you if you won't be honest with me? Good morning. Another exciting day. Good morning, guys. I was definitely planning on smoking if I got the chance later today. A couple months ago, Nashville experienced uh, a major flood. Thousands of people still do not have a place to live. We were able to set up a, an opportunity for us to go help a family. I think it's going to be a great opportunity to, for us to work together as a team and make a difference in someone else's life. Let's get started. It was very important for us to involve the teens with uh, a project that allowed us to help someone else. Hey, now. Good morning. How y'all doing? I'm Ken. Henry Williams. Nice to meet you. This is Carl, the homeowner. Hello. Carl Hendrick. This is Sebastian. Hi, young man. How are you doing? And this is Becky. Nice to meet you. Young lady. This is how much water was in the uh, yard. About five feet, maybe uh, even six feet out here. I lost everything in the house. I appreciate you coming and helping us out. Uh, we're going to take you into the house, go from there. OK, this room we're going to paint today, and we're simply going to give the brown paint another coat. Great. Okay? Let's do it. All right, I'm going to stick by you for just a second there, Mr. Huh? Sebastian. Two minutes. Painting was pretty boring, and being stuck with Ken is very annoying. Go back over here and just check your work. We have a nice solid coat. I'm not used to like working for so long without having little breaks for a cigarette. Hey kids, uh, y'all doing a great job. Uh, I have a little project outside. Yeah. OK. When Carl said we were going outside, eyes lit up. I was hoping that no one would come out with us and follow us. I, I built this uh, little bench here for my wife, and uh, you can tell it's very dirty. Carl asked me and Sebastian to pressure wash his wife's bench that she always loves to sit in. I haven't been two or three days without a cigarette, so I didn't give a if we got caught or not. What? It's not much, but I was extremely nervous about getting caught. But the parents, they had no idea that we were smoking. <laughs> There's still a couple spots back here. It was kind of fun washing the bench, and I even got to have a cigarette out of it, so it was cool. Sebastian! Huh? Shut her off for me. Sebastian and Becky really put some effort into it. Thank you, big guy. Thank you. They did an excellent job. When we got back home, Mary Jo kept sensing that she could smell cigarette smoke. We felt like, at that point, something was going on out there. All right, guys. Just a gut feeling that the smoke that I've been smelling isn't from the clothes that you brought, but possibly from smoking while you've been here. I don't have anything to smoke. I wish I did. What about you? No, I, I haven't smoked at all here. You did not smoke at community service. I did not smoke at community service. No. I was very convinced there was something somewhere. We're going to go through your stuff, 
We're going through your stuff. You may not go upstairs till we do. The dogs were on the chase. Once she sniffs it, she will find it. Man. Man, oh man. It broke my heart. It's not so much about the cigarettes. It's about her deceiving me. I found these. So who would they belong to? And they belong to me. Sebastian came up clean. We're trying real hard to work with you when you still are playing us. This is a trust issue. How can I help you if you won't be honest with me? You get to go outside and do some cutting. Let's go. I felt bad for Becky, but I was really happy that I didn't get caught. Stump number one. Stump number two. Stump number three. Get started. I'll be out to check on you in a minute. I already knew I was probably going to have to saw it all the wood, but maybe, like, if he calmed down, I might get out of it. So livid right now. Do not come back in my house until all three of those stumps are cut. Sounds good. Very good. We'll give it a few more minutes. I'll talk to her and see if she's ready to uh, participate. want to make sure you understand that I'm angry at some of the behavior. I really want to help you get to where you want to be. But I can't do that if you're not willing to help me. I'd like to put to bed everything that happened earlier, but you need to cut three stumps. Got to do it. I'm willing to come out there with you and be a cheerleader. Once we get past three stumps, we're going to wipe the slate clean again, if you're willing to do that. Agreed. Excellent. When you have a consequence, you've got to finish it, because that's the only way that you can put it to bed. Well, I appreciate you coming back and working on this. Good to see you again. I was proud of Becky when she made right what was wrong. As a group, we want to say we care about you. And we want to help get you through this. Thank you. So we're all going to pitch in. Sounds good. Becky got a real taste of what family does. And there's consequences. But we stick together when you're in the rough patch. <laughs> this represents family. This represents working together. You with me on this? Yep. There's your souvenirs. Good job. Thank you. All right. Coming up. Your temper tantrums get to everyone. A letter from home hits Becky and Mary Jo. The things would bother her and scare her. Hey, man. You ready? We're going somewhere? Yeah. I wanted to pull Sebastian aside. Uh, he had received a letter from home. It's been a busy week, hasn't it? Yeah. It was time to hear from his parents to see how they felt. Well, have a seat. Something came for you. Letter from your parents. I thought that I was in trouble, so I was pretty surprised that he pulled out a letter from my parents. Want me to hang around here with you, or you want to read it by yourself? Do it myself. All right. You said me. You are a very important part of this family. You bring laughter to the house, but unfortunately, you also bring some unnecessary drama. And you are a very charismatic and intelligent young man. I just wish you would actually apply these good qualities at school at home. We worry about your reckless ways and impulsivity. 
your lack of responsibility if it's frightening. We will always be there to support you. We can't wait to see you and hug you, love mom, dad, Marina, and Chris. It was just basically the same old stuff that they yell at me for at home in a nicer way. What's the news from home? You can read it. Sounds like your parents care about you very much. And they do want I to know they care about you. What do they mean by unnecessary drama? Stupid arguments yeah. that we have. Over what? Over school, over not coming home early enough. You feel like you're, you, you have a right to do what you want? Or do you feel like maybe uh, we need to take other people into consideration with their actions? Parents can be frustrating, but it doesn't sound like that you're trying to make your life miserable. <laughs> I truly was disappointed. And Sebastian was not being considered of anybody but Sebastian. They just want to be a part of your life, it sounds like. When they ask you a question, give them a real answer. After finishing the letter, we've got to find a way for Sebastian to be able to communicate. I knew we needed some more heart-to-heart uh, -heart time. You got some things I need to do in the garage. Want to give me a hand? Something came from home. And I have a letter for you from your mom. That was the first letter I ever got from my mom. There have been so many changes with you during the last few months that really scare me. Words, I hate being here, I hate being in this house, is very upsetting. Your temper tantrums get to everyone. We shouldn't have to put up with that attitude. I have never expected you to be perfect. I do, I do expect you to be all you can be and try as hard as you can. I hope you realize how much I only want the best for you. Love, Mom. Do you agree with what was in the letter? For most of it. Can I see it? Okay. The image I got from Becky's home life was that Becky was doing what Becky wanted to do. As a mother, I can see where she, where she would say that some of the things would bother her and scare her. The main thing is scary. Moms love their daughters. And when they feel like they're losing control, they feel like they aren't, um, that they just don't know what to say. It's like, it, it's scary. It's so scary. just kind of hit me that, like, I knew it hurt her. Just, just now kind of sunk in. I think she'd really appreciate you just listening to her and getting to know her. That's how you get closer to someone. I think your mom wrote this with a lot of love in her heart. I was not expecting to connect with Mary Jo at all this week. I am glad that I would open up with her. She knows that the world is so wide for you and so many opportunities. Now that you've been in our lives, I want the best for you too. I want you to know um, you're real important to me. All those pent up emotions, she was able to release them all. I think that was a great step in the right direction with Becky. Sweet girl. Coming up. These are things that we don't want in our life. Can Mary Jo and Ken get the teens to see the big picture? Does it bother you enough to do something about it? All right. We have a lot of things that we need to get some pictures of so that we can uh, put them up on the internet. I wanted to set up another opportunity to talk to Sebastian in a non-threatening environment because 
As soon as he realizes that we're going to discuss issues, I know the first thing he does is close up. Got it? Yeah. All right, I'll stand this up, and let's see if we can get the top of this. Ken brought me in to help him with taking pictures of his cars and stuff that he sells. It's just a hobby. It's cool. So what kind of things tick you off when you're at home? I don't get in my way, like, what I want to do. So you want to come and go as you please, or, or what? Yeah, I'm going to do what I want to do. Yeah, yeah. Do you feel responsible for anything that's going on right now at your house? Yeah. In what way? A lot of stuff. Just, my mom's not happy, or she's just tired and fed up with everything. I play a big role in that, making her feel like it. Does that bother you? Yeah, it bothers me, but... All right, can we stop talking about it right now? <laughs> I just wanted to start doing this. I know. Well, I want to ask you one more question. Does it bother you enough to do something about it? What do you think of that? Okay. I can't just think about it off the top of my head right now. OK. It's not like I try to hurt my parents, because I obviously love them. I have to deal with it, shape up a little bit with them, show that I care about them. Do you feel like you need to reevaluate some of your choices? Yeah. And that's all I'm wanting you to do. With Sebastian, we definitely made some progress. He admitted he was responsible for causing pain and, and sorrow with his mom. So why don't I just let you think about it? Yeah. All right, let's take some more pictures. I also believe that Sebastian still has a ways to go. Yeah, like that, that looks good. Let's have a seat and talk. When Becky and I had discussed the letter, she had really opened herself up to me. She was uh, ready to let herself be vulnerable, and it's a good time to heal. I didn't get to address this about your smoking issue and you hiding the cigarettes. That was one of our rules, and you knew it right off the bat, but you chose to, um, for lack of a better word, deceive. And my big issue is the deception part. Do you normally deceive like that? Or why did you do it to us? I'm not used to having to follow like that many rules. I wanted to show Becky that being vulnerable is a lot less work than keeping a wall up. I noticed that when, um, whenever we try to confront you, you would take off. I was just wondering why you think you do that. That's what I always do. What do you think would help with maybe you and your mom and your family? Instead of just taking off, maybe just, OK, let, let's, let me dig in my heels here and see if I can um, resolve this once and for all to make it better. Would that help you? Probably. You think you would try it? I can try it. <laughs> she needs to choose to, uh, instead of running from her problems, tackle them head on and uh, get some resolution. What does this represent? Defiance. Defiance. What's that one say? Lying. Lying. These are things that we don't want in our life, do we? No. I want you to throw it in the fire for me. OK. One, two, three. Woo! Get the rest of them. All of them. I see that me being defined has set me back. And I want to change so I can make some more responsible decisions. Let's throw some, some marshmallows and make some more. I'm actually pretty surprised that I learned something this week. Like, how a real family like, truly is and how you're supposed to act. Awesome. That's awesome. Sebastian has acknowledged that he is a part of what's going on, and he needs to change his methods in order to make his home life more successful. I don't think Becky had ever been held this accountable before. It's been easy in the past for her to just walk away. I think it's changed now. Coming up. I don't do it on purpose. Sebastian and Becky make peace with their pasts. Well, Becky, I 
just got news. Your mom's on her way. Really? Yes, ma'am. Go ahead and head upstairs. Get all your stuff packed up, ready to go. All right. Get you back down here, OK? All right. All right. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. I'm definitely ready to go home and go back to California with my family and friends. What's going on, dude? What's up? How are we making it? Finish getting your stuff packed up and uh, bring you downstairs by the door, because they should be here any time. All right. All right? All right, mm -hmm. I'll see you in just a little bit. My mom really doesn't deserve me being an actor. The same with, like, my dad and my whole family. I'm excited to see Sevi. Hopefully, he'll show me that he learned something that, that will give us a chance to start all over again. Okay. Here we go. After you, sir. All right. Uh, <laughs> Why are you crying? <laughs> the feeling that Sebastian gave me is he felt like he was more tranquil, more relaxed. Hello, how are you? How are you doing? My name is Ken Illig. Nice to meet you. This is my wife, Mary, Mary Jo. Mary jo. It's so nice to meet you. Let's go inside and have a seat and talk for a few minutes, OK? Thank you. It was just nice seeing my mom and knowing that she still cared about me. How has it been with him at home? It's been crazy because mainly it's the going out anytime and coming back really late and. How does that make you feel knowing you you put your mom under that kind of stress? It doesn't feel good. Uh huh. I don't do it on purpose. It's just that I'm out with my friends and I don't keep track of time. Sebastian, I'd like you to share with your mom maybe a plan of action. We talked a little bit about this the other day. I have to sit down and actually discuss and how to fix the problem instead of just running from it. I'm willing to commit to what you asked me to do and slowly take baby steps, but we're going to get it through and figure things out. I'm already proud of you because you're thinking that way. I mean, the fact that you can think that way and, and you want to help yourself and help the whole situation to be better, it really makes me proud. You need to have big dreams. You underestimate yourself. You really do. You can do anything you set your mind to. Just do it in a positive way. You're going to go big places. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're very welcome. I'm very proud of you, Sibby. Sebastian has the world in front of him if he chooses to step up and do what he needs to do to get there. I think he's honest about what, what he's saying, that he's going to try. And for me, that's more than enough. I'm pretty happy that I came to stay with the Illigs. It was worth it. They're really nice people. You got to give me a hug, yeah. dog. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Missed you, though. I missed you, too. I am feeling very nervous, wondering how Becky handled this whole week. I'm hoping Becky learned that family is very important and that mom's not that bad of a person. She's probably jumping around in her seat, too. Probably, hopefully. <laughs> I actually did feel like really good to be able to show my mom that I was like happy to see her and be emotional in front of me. Come on up. The tears kind of surprised me. It showed me how much she did miss me. Right off the, the bat, there was some issues with uh, lying. There was a bit of deceiving going on. What is it like with Becky at home? Uh, Becky and I butt heads. She uh, does have a problem getting things done when they're expected of her. And there's uh, a lot of yelling, a lot of screaming, which I would like to stop. Tell your mom what her letter meant to you and how it touched you. Uh, it was really difficult to read. Painful, difficult? Yeah, like mainly painful. <laughs> like just that, seeing how you really felt like you told me before, just kind of sunk in when I read the letter. I'm glad I got to say it and write it, and I'm glad you got to think about it. Becky, 
What do you want to do with your mom, and what do you want to change to make things better? I just want to stop fighting, be able to talk about stuff more, instead of just like walking away from everything. I would like that too. I love you, baby. Me too. She does seem to have opened her heart to try it in a different way, and I will try to do the same. Oh, very so. <laughs> Becky didn't even know herself, I don't think. I'll miss it's you. It's going to be great. I think mm -hmm. so. Mm. She left a different young lady than she came. Give me a hug, girl. <laughs> we'll miss you. We'll see you guys, too. When I first got here, I had this huge wall up, and I was pretty ungrateful. My heart does feel a little bit more open. It's, like, really scary, though. I miss you so much. I miss you, too,